As all Muslims know and believe, the Qur'an is the word of Allah, and He is the one who speaks to us in the Qur'an. And Allah does that by using many different ways and styles. In some cases, He uses the first person in the Qur'an. فَأُولَئِكَ أَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ But in other verses, Allah refers to Himself in the third person, like in these examples. الله الذي خلقكم ثم رزقكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم. However, and because of such verses, which are quite common in the Quran, some claim that the Quran is not from Allah, because Allah is referred to as a third person in his book, and that if it were from Allah, then it would have been all narrated in the first person in its entirety. However, saying such thing only testifies to their lack of knowledge of how the Qur'an was revealed, and also lacking knowledge about Arabic language and the basics of balagha, or Arabic rhetoric. But why is that? Well, first of all, The Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and then he would tell it to his companions to write it down and memorize it. And in many revelations, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was told to report certain things about Allah in order to tell it to people and deliver the message, like in these examples. قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَأْمُرُ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدَ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدَ So, in these examples, it is clear that Allah is addressing Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to report certain things about Allah, and in many other occasions, it comes as an answer to what some disbelievers had asked, like in this example. So in such contexts, using the third person would make the most sense, since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is delivering the exact message that Allah has revealed to him. But then you might be thinking, there are other verses in the Qur'an in which Allah refers to himself using the third person without having the same context. Like in this example. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum And as we can see here, Allah is telling us about himself in the third person, rather than using the first person by saying, لا إله إلا أنا الحي القيوم. So why is this happening? And in order to understand this concept, it is important to know that the Qur'an was revealed in a plain Arabic tongue, and one very important aspect of the literary style of the Arabs is that the speaker may refer to himself sometimes in the first person, sometimes in the third person, sometimes in the singular and sometimes in the plural, all happening in the same piece of text or poem. This variation in style is part of the eloquence of the Arabic language with the main purpose of adding variation to the text, which makes the style more interesting and less repetitive. That's why you will see that the Qur'an sometimes uses the first person singular, the first person plural, third person singular, third person plural, and switching between them. And this literary phenomenon in Arabic is called iltifat. So what is iltifat? Iltifat in Arabic literally means switching or turning. And it is a literary device used in writing or in speeches, much like metaphors and personifications, 
and iltifat as a literary device in Arabic has three main purposes. Number one, using different pronouns and switching between them encourages the listener to pay more attention and concentrate more on the message that is being conveyed. Two, making the listener think and ponder more about the text itself, since changing style will make you think about the reason of the change. Three, avoiding repetition of the same style throughout a piece of text, especially if it is a long one, so that it is not boring to read through it. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Qur'an, a book revealed in Arabic, uses this literary device as well. And there are many examples showing the use of almost every single variation of iltifat in the Qur'an. Like, for example, going from third person to second person in Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi <laughs> Rabbi بالعالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين So here the surah starts with with the third person form and later it switches to the second person, which is addressing Allah directly. And as you may notice, the first part of the surah, which is given in third person, it is a part where we praise Allah, the Almighty. But as soon as we start another segment where we do dua or supplication, we start addressing Allah directly because Allah is close to answer our dua. So, iltifat here serves the purpose of differentiating between two types of ibadah or worship, praising Allah for one and doing dua as the second one. And in other examples, we also see iltifat going from the second person to the third person. <laughs> Here the ayah starts by addressing a type of people directly using the second person and at the end of the ayah it uses the third person form. And we also see switching from first person to third person in Surah Al-Kawthar. So, the surah starts with the first person. We have granted you. Al-Kawthar. And then it switches to the third person. So, pray to your Lord. And it didn't say, فَصَلِّ لَنَا So, pray to us. To emphasize on the fact that the plural pronoun used in the first ayah refers to Allah, the One, and that prayer is only for Allah, and not for any giver. And there are so many other examples and many different variations of iltifat, each of which contributes to keeping you thinking and pondering over what you are reading to deliver the precise message. Interestingly enough, there is a similar concept in English which is called analogy, which uses a similar technique in English texts. So those who claim that using third person and switching between them is a mistake in the Qur'an actually lack knowledge of both Arabic and English. Finally, and from a logical point of view, the Qur'an was revealed among the most skilled Arabic poets and speakers at a time when Arabic literature was at its peak. If this book contained hundreds of mistakes, as many ignorant claim today, then how could any Arab in their right mind, seeing these mistakes, can still be convinced that this is the word of Allah and then follow the Prophet, peace be upon him? On the contrary, Arabs saw the perfection of the Qur'an and realized 
that it is beyond human ability to produce anything that rivals its perfect style and the wisdom of its message. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.